Hello, precious one. I hope you've had a blessed week. It's Pastor Derek and Selgina coming away once again from the Mary School. And today we want to continue with what we have been doing for the past few weeks. And the title is Things You Should Never Do in Your Marriage. I want to believe that these videos are being a blessing to you. Please do share your testimonies with us. God richly bless you. Once again, as usual, we are honored and favored to have our one and only Pastor Derek here with us. <laughs> And it is always a blessing. I know you'll agree with me to have Pastor Derek with us to teach us on marriage and relationships. So Pastor Derek, you're welcome. This is a very, very beautiful tie. And I so love it. Thank you. Thank you it's very much. It's good to have you again. I hope you've had a very good week. Yes, by the grace of God. We bless God. Yes. So today we want to continue with our session on things you should never do in your marriage. And we are on part five. Yeah. And I want to believe that there are still more things we can learn from you yeah. today. Hello everyone. God bless you for joining us. And uh, please share, share, share it uh, as far as you can. Right. So we're still looking at things you should not be doing in your marriage. And today we start with never vocalize negativity in your marriage you see life is such that negative things happen things will happen that you don't like there'll be times where you don't have enough money there'll be times your husband will do something you don't like your wife will do something you don't like there'll be issues at work there'll be issues with children and and all that but you see negativity begets negativity when you speak negative stuff, it brings down the spirit. The Bible says that a joyful heart is a good medicine, okay? But a broken spirit dries up the bone. When you keep talking about negative things, what it does is that it increases stress. It increases frustration. It brings depression. It brings hopelessness. And then it can create antagonism inside the, the home where Instead of now just focusing on that negative thing, you tend to start looking for negative things inside each other and then you start attacking each other and accusing each other. So when negative things happen around you or things are happening in the marriage that you know are not good, the hymn writer says that what a friend we have in Jesus, all our sins and griefs to bear, what a privilege to carry everything to God in prayer. Take it to God in prayer. Oh, what peace we often forfeit. Oh, what needless pain we bear. Oh, because we do not carry everything to God in prayer. When you have negative things happening around you, talk more to God instead of just complaining and murmuring and, 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 and making everybody feel so down. Okay? Sometimes everybody can see that things are not going on well. Don't give it too much voice. Don't forget that your voice is also a prophetic tool. Yeah. As you speak, on the negative things over and over, you magnify them. Faith goes down. Doubt goes up. Evil can now take over your words and run with it. And you see, according to your words, you will either be freed or convicted. So please, don't so much focus on negative things. When you see some of those things, just turn a blind eye. Pretend like you didn't see anything and move on. Try your best not to give too much voice to negativity in your marriage. God bless you. Amen. Thank Amen. you so much, Pastor Derek. The issue is that it's easy to drift to the negative side of things. It's very we, easy. We don't, we don't make any effort to talk neg negative or act negative or l enjoy negative things. It naturally comes as a natural thing. But then for us to be able to move away from that, we need to make the conscious effort to, to think positive, to act positive and to behave positive. So if you will avoid that, you need to be conscious. You need to tell yourself that, look, I have to ensure that I am focusing and vocalizing the positives rather than the negatives. Otherwise, there will be no effort. You see that you will always drift to that side. Yeah. Thank you so much, Pastor Larry. What else can we learn? And, and it breeds a toxic environment. Yes, yes the next thing we, 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 we have to be mindful of not doing in our marriage is using sex as a bargaining chip, trading sex. Okay? So it's like, okay, you wash my car, so I'll give you one. You didn't give you didn't wash the car, so today nothing for you. Okay, you, you did shopping for me today, so you, you you have access. Oh no, you didn't do this, so you cannot have it. You know, you see, sex is not something we sell. Once you reduce it to if you do this for me, I give it to you. If you give this to me, I give it to you, then you become no better than a prostitute. Marriage is different from prostitution, where you give yourself in return for something or in exchange of something. 
okay in marriage the only reason by which we 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 draw ourselves from our spouses is either we are genuinely unwell or we are giving ourselves as scripture says to fasting and prayer yeah. or in a moment a time of menstruation yeah. or things like that okay so so far as none of these things is happening you should never use transactions as a means of giving or denying your spouse of sex yeah. okay uh, uh, you haven't paid the rent so no sex for you until the rent is paid <laughs> uh, you, i i had to buy the light bill myself today so no sex. please stop doing that it doesn't glorify god and 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 god sees you as a fraud the bible says defraud ye not one another okay don't defraud one another when you deny each other of sex the bible sees you as a fraud so please don't do that and don't use bargaining tips. If your husband didn't do what is expected of him, let it never be said of you that it is you who denied him because he didn't do something. You play your part. Don't forget, marriage is said that it's a covenant. You have your part to play. Your husband has his part to play or your wife has her part to play. It is not conditional. There's nothing in the Bible that says if your wife does this, then you do that. Yeah. Or if your husband does it, then you do that. You are told what you must do. Your husband and or your wife is told what they must do. Yeah. Everybody will stand before God and give an account as to whether they obeyed what God said. And on the judgment day, there will be no conditional judgment as to, okay, oh, it's not your fault because your husband did this. That's why you did that. So please stay in your lane. Do what is expected of you. Leave your husband, leave your wife to God to deal with them. God bless yeah, you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Pastor yeah. That's an important thing to think of or to ensure that it's not happening in our marriages. Mm -hmm. And also we tend to forget, we tend to forget that the Bible says that our bodies belong to each other. Mm -hmm. So I mean, once you get married, your body belongs to your husband, and your husband's body belongs to you. So denying each other of sex or using sex as a bargain is a no no. And I mean Fortunately, or unfortunately, sorry, it looks like it's a woman who do that. Yeah. It's a woman who do that. Some men also do some it sometimes. Men, yeah. yeah, some men do it. It may be very rare, but I mean, that is not the right thing to do. However, I've had a few conversations with, with some women, and they insist that they do some of those things because of the kind of men they are married to. Some of the men are wicked. Some of the men are very, very bad. And let's say they will not provide for your needs. They will not, do, they will not give you money. They will not take care of you. But once they want sex and you tell them, okay, before you do it, give me money for cooking or then they'll give you money. <laughs> but that shouldn't be. That shouldn't it's be. not scripture. Men, we, as husbands, husbands need to play their roles well and wives need to play their roles well as well so that sex will not be used as a bargain in their mind because mm -hmm. it reduces the value of sex. Yeah. And it's, it's, it's not right. Yeah. Okay, I think there are more we can learn today. Yeah. Uh, never mock your wife or your husband using their disability or shortcoming or or weakness yeah. okay some couples do that it is no good it ruins the beauty and the joy of their marriage and it ruins your spouse's confidence yeah okay everybody may have one thing or the other that may not be perfect about their lives okay we live in a broken world we live in a broken world. everything is not perfect so if you you overlook your own imperfection and you focus on your spouse's imperfection and use it, you use it to mock them. You use it to laugh at them. You use it to insult them. Anything that happens, if they're trying to bring their own contribution, oh, you, then you just, you're like, yeah, maybe that's how, maybe he has a list or something. Okay? Anyway, once he starts talking, da, 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 that you, don't do that. Oh, Pastor Derek. <laughs> Don't do that. <laughs> Don't use anything that is not perfect in your spouse to mock them. Because you can't create another human being. And you yourself, you are not perfect anyway. So please, let's be compassionate. Let's be compassionate with each other. Let us love the whole being that God has given us. And let us never make them feel that they don't deserve to be in our lives. It is not godly. It doesn't, it, it's not good. Let's not do it. And even if we will talk about all um, think or do something about imperfections. I think it's just right that we do with our own imperfections. Yeah. And we, we look at our own imperfections and weaknesses and see how best we can overcome it or live with it rather than always focusing on your spouse's weak. Because, I mean, some of these weaknesses, they, there's absolutely nothing anybody can do about it. Mm -hmm. If you are born in a particular way or you had an accident and something went wrong somewhere and, and, and your spouse mocks you with that, it can be very painful. Yeah. It can be very, very painful. So let's keep an eye on that and ensure you remember that you used to mock the way I walk. 
but <laughs> no, that is different. Now, now you walk nicely. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't fucking. It was just funny. It looks so funny. <laughs> Don't do that. It, it used to annoy me a lot. It used to annoy me a lot. So like, don't do it. Works so nicely, <laughs> don't do it. But you know, I'm I'm sorry for that. Yeah, I, I forgive only, you. I, I was forgive only you. Uh, being silly. I forgive anyway, you. thank you. So don't mock your spouse with any. Not even the way he walks. Don't be like <laughs> not even the way he was. Just admire everything and enjoy your life. Thank you. Because sorry. I mean, there are so many good things you will see. Yeah. Focus on those ones. Yeah. Okay. Why do we always focus on bad things in this fallen world? Their mind is always tilted towards negativity. See, no matter somebody can do a hundred good things and do just one bad thing, everybody forgets about the good. We yeah. all concentrate on the yeah. bad things that yeah. that they do. Mm. Anyway, um, any other thing that we can learn from you? Yeah. Today? Um. Another thing you must avoid in your marriage is hiding information that could have an impact on your life. Or on the marriage, like information about your career. Let's say you are having issues at work, you are likely to be fired. You keep quiet, you keep quiet, you keep quiet, you don't tell your spouse until it actually happens. There are some uh, spouses, they have even been fired from work. They are not going to work and they hide it from their spouses. They wake up in the morning, dress up like they are still going to work, and, they go and then they go. Yeah, I've heard and they are out before. and out. They stay there till evening, then they come back as if they are working. Until later, for some whatever reason, maybe your wife who is in trouble and then she calls the workplace and says, Ah, you've not been he, here he, long. He, yeah, he's been sacked from this place or he left this place six months ago. Ah, what is up? You see, when you do that, you undermine the integrity of your marriage. Okay, your wife or your husband cannot trust you anymore. Right. So such things, issues happening at, at work, somebody is bullying you. When you come home, share. Right. Because they affect your mental health, they affect your, 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 your general health, and they affect the way you relate with your wife or your husband. So before you realize you come home, you are always agitated, you're always angry, you're, you are giving rude answers. Maybe it's because somebody is tormenting you at work. But if you share it with your spouse, they know where you are. So they'll be able to understand you. Even when you are being too grumpy, they understand you that because of what you are going through at work. But when you keep all these things uh, uh, to your chest and you, you start behaving some of those things, it easily triggers quarrels and arguments because your spouse doesn't know what you are going through. Yeah. So please, the things you are going through, sit your yeah. spouse down and share. Talk to them. This is what I'm going through at work. This is what I'm going through in the hospital. This is what they say I'm going through. This is what they, the condition they say I have. This is the problem I'm having in this area or in that area. Okay? Share. Don't hide sensitive information. Don't hide information that can affect you and affect the marriage or the family in general. Be very, very careful about that. Thank you, Pastor Derek. And dear husband, dear wife, when your spouse shares such information with you, please show concern. Please care. Don't ignore them. Don't look down on them and don't turn your backs on them because sometimes they may not want to share these things with you because of your reaction to some of the things they will share with you. Yes, like we've, we've mentioned over and over again, we are not perfect um, beings. There are weaknesses, there are issues. We make mistakes. We falter here and there. The things do happen. So when your spouse shares such information with you, as much as possible, be compassionate, be kind, be helpful, supportive. Do everything you can to stand with them rather than making life a lot easier for them. Thank you, Pastor Derek. Um, we have room for more. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Another thing you shouldn't do in your marriage is to entertain friends or family members who have no regard for your spouse. If you have friends... Or family members who don't respect your husband, they don't respect your wife. Keep them away from your home. Keep them away from your life. People who will come, they enter the house. Your husband is sitting there. They, they pretend like they haven't seen anybody. Mm -hmm. Pass by him, come and talk to you, and then they go. Your friends who will come in and 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 they 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 they, 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 they like they have no respect. The way they greet your wife, you show that they don't respect her. They eat and just push it down, expecting that your wife will come and pick it up and things like that. Please, anybody who comes around you and does not respect your wife. Does not respect your husband. Keep them away. They are evil. Their heart is not right. And they don't respect you in the end. I learned this from my spiritual father, uh, Dr. Amkia Kofi. When somebody was disturbing me in ministry and the person wanted
protect my wife away from anything. They didn't want my wife to be involved in anything in, in the ministry. So I went to see uh, my, my friend and said, Daddy, this is what I'm going through. He said that he wants your wife out today. Tomorrow it will be you he wants out. Mm -hmm. And and I put that. He said that anybody who does not have regard for your wife, don't allow them around you. Mm -hmm. And it helped me a lot. And I'm passing this on to you as well. Anybody who has no respect for your wife, anybody who has no respect for your husband, don't keep them around you. They are dangerous. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. That is so important. And the sad aspect is when maybe somebody doesn't respect your husband and they come and visit you mm -hmm. and your husband is sitting down and they join the wife joins the person the friend or family to, to mock, mock to, to call your husband names to laugh at your husband's that is the worst of it mm. please don't allow that we need to value each other your husband is all you have and your wife is all you have so please let's value each other if they die now you will be miserable. What would you do? Then you don't want to have regrets at that time and tell yourself, oh, I could have respected him. I could have loved him. I could have been a lot nicer to him or to her. This is the opportunity to prove that you are that you are a blessing to each other. So please don't join friends and family to mock. If they start doing it, stop them there. Be a protective man or woman for your spouse against outsiders and you will be glad you did yeah, the next thing is to not divulge sensitive information about your spouse to outsiders or even about your marriage to outsiders. Sensitive information. Maybe your 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 wife is having some special medical issue, okay? And then before you realize you are telling her work colleagues, you are telling your friends, you are telling everybody in church, no, don't do that. Because not everybody can handle secrets. And people react to people based on what they know about them. Yeah. Okay? So, once you tell everybody or you tell somebody, my wife is suffering from this. Once they see your wife, they first they look at that place where they, they believe <laughs> the, the issue is. Okay? And it, it, it affects how they relate with, with her. Or him as well. Your husband is having, let's let's say, uh, 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 God forbid, but let's say you, he's having uh, erection problems, erectile dysfunction, and then you tell your friend, and you tell his friend, anybody, uh, hmm, hmm, we are having a problem. Or these days, hmm, we are having a yeah, rise yeah, your now. brother, yeah, the rise and fall of Idi Amin. <laughs> For now, it's a complete fall. There's no rise. <laughs> And then now when they see your husband, they start looking yeah, at, nice. at, the, at this groin area. You see, hey, this man, when he's talking, he too may go to work or some board meeting. He's sitting down trying to talk boldly with his intelligence and his knowledge. And somebody just looking at him, <laughs> you, <laughs> half a man. <laughs> and they, please, there are certain things. Your husband is going through something. Your wife is going through something. They let you know, cover them. Mm -hmm. The only person you must talk to it's God. Don't divorce even to the, the person's own family members unless they give you the permission to. Don't call his mother. Ah, ma, your husband, your, your son is suffering from this. Your daughter is suffering from that. Please don't tell his or her brothers and sisters. Keep it. Keep it between the two of you and fight. Unless you've been given the permission to don't pass certain sensitive information about your, your spouse or delicate things going on in your marriage to outsiders because it may turn around to bite you in a way you didn't expect. Thank you. Amazing stuff. God bless you so much, Pastor yeah. Derek. I think we could have one last one. All right. Never eat without knowing what your spouse is eating. Don't sit down. Spread anything Enjoy on the plate yourself. What, and eat. <laughs> and you don't know what and your wife is going to top. eat. You don't know what your husband is going to eat. <laughs> Never. As a family, it is important that at least one major meal in a day, you all sit together and you eat together. But if that is not going to be possible, before you tuck into your main meal for the day, always make sure that your wife or your husband has also got something to eat. Okay, know that they have something. To eat. Don't just eat and you don't care. It amazes me when you see a husband is eating and he doesn't know what his wife is going to eat. A wife is eating and she doesn't know what her husband is going to eat. Look after each other. Look after each, Look after each other. Important. It is important. Yeah. We are all we have. Yeah. You are your husband's mother. Yeah. You are your wife's father. Look after each other. Mm. And God will bless you. Amen.
you. God bless you. Thank you so much, Pastor Derek. I think it's been another awesome time with you. And if you did not get anything at all today, remember, look after each other. Dear husband, look after your wife. Dear wife, look after your husband. God bless you. And until we come your way again, once again, it's us from the marriage school. Please do share the video. You can send it on um, your WhatsApp platforms and other groups. And we will see you next week, Godwin. Have a beautiful week. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. And please subscribe to the YouTube channel as well. Subscribe. God bless you. Bye. Bye-bye.